Hey, what's going on guys? It's Alex here from Simple Mods and welcome back to another video where I'm continuing my coverage of Gigabyte's uh, top Z390 Aorus motherboard. So this time I'm checking out the Z390 Aorus Extreme Water Force. And here's the naked board along with the massive water cooling mono block that it comes with. This board is actually pretty much the same as the normal Z390 Aorus Extreme, which I just covered. So I'll have that link uh, in the video description if you guys want to check it out. In this video, I'm pretty much uh, going to focus on the mono block itself getting it installed on the board and doing some testing, both overclocking the CPU and seeing what temps we get uh, with the mono block installed, as well as looking at the um, water-cooled VRM temps. Other than the mono block, uh, I'm not going to go into too much details um, about the board itself, mainly because all the features, um, the VRM design um, and all that is pretty much the same between this and the normal Z390 Aorus Extreme. So I'm going to be um, setting up a pretty ghetto um, water cooling setup, uh, just probably on top of the motherboard box uh, on the table here. So I'll walk you guys through all that. Uh, and again, if you are interested in uh, seeing an unboxing of this board, as it does come included with quite a few extras in the box, uh, I'll link you to my good friend Nick um, over at Gear Seekers who covered all that. I mean, just check out this massive um, box that it comes in. I'm not sure I've ever seen a motherboard box uh, this big. So uh, let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. Let's take a look at the motherboard itself before getting the actual mono block installed. And as you can see, it's pretty much a naked Z390 Aorus Extreme that's missing the VRM and the PCH heatsink. And there's also been some slight physical changes, mainly to the IO cover just here, and also these sections that extend from the integrated um, audio cover. These are mainly just uh, physical aspect changes from the normal Z390 Aorus Extreme, just to make this uh, version of the board fit in better uh, once you have the mono block installed. Everything else on the PCB, the VRM, all the connectors and all that are pretty much the same. So make sure you give my video on the Z390 Aorus Extreme a watch if you want to learn more about all that and seeing what this motherboard has to offer. You'll see I have this little cable plugged in just at the bottom here and that extends just to a standard um, USB power bank. It's a pretty nifty connector that Gigabyte has on board most of their motherboards that feature RGB lighting. Um, it's just a way to basically light it all up without actually having to power on the motherboard. So it's definitely a cool feature to have, uh, especially for filming videos like this. So you'll actually see that the motherboard doesn't have uh, too many RGB LEDs uh, directly on it. It's only the ESS Sabre Hi-Fi logo that lights up on here. And then also the um, integrated I.O. Uh, on the back. And that's mainly because all the other RGB features uh, will be found on the mono block. And uh, make sure you plug in the cables for those. So you'll have just a connector up here that says uh, LED CPU, just around the CPU socket. And the other one is just at the bottom here um, next to the PCH. It'll say LED PCH. So make sure you plug those in once you have your uh, mono block installed. So let's get the motherboard out of the way and I'll give you a look at the mono block as well. So you'll see that I've actually removed the uh, M.2 heat sinks. So here they are here. It's great that you can actually separate these two so you don't have to worry about um, having your M.2 SSDs uh, stuck in there or making sure that you do install them uh, before you put on the whole entire um, mono block assembly. And now looking at the mono block itself, uh, we can actually see that it's uh, sort of spread in between two different sections. Uh, let me just turn it around here. Um, so you'll have the main section that will cool your CPU and the VRM area, and then just the section at the bottom here that will cool your PCH. And then of course, everything's connected uh, using uh, clear acrylic channels. that will make sure your coolant uh, circulates throughout the whole assembly. The actual cooling plates themselves are of course uh, copper and they have been uh, nickel plated. And you will see that uh, most of the thermal pads and everything already comes pre-installed out of the box. Although this mono block was used before by Nick over at Gear Seekers. So this may not look as neat as it usually does uh, if you were to buy this motherboard brand new. So the main thing you'll need to worry about um, before getting the mono block installed is of course uh, getting your CPU into the socket, applying your thermal paste and everything to that. Maybe make sure you um, double check all of the um, pre-installed thermal pads, make sure you remove all of this plastic backing. Then once you install it all on, of course, make sure you plug in the two RGB cables that I mentioned previously. And in terms of mounting holes, it's all pretty standard. So you've got four just around the CPU socket then two mountings uh, just uh, next to the uh, two VRM sections and just there. And then also there's four more mounting locations um, just around the PCH uh, cooling area. So all that is pretty much uh, standard. It's just with this uh, mono block assembly, everything comes in uh, just the one piece. Also, if you're wanting to pull apart the um, mono block uh, itself, maybe after you've used it for a while and you just want to give it a clean, 
you'll see there are all these screws on the back side of it. So if you undo all those, you'll be able to pull apart the whole thing and uh, give it a clean, just mainly um, around the CPU area. And that's probably the most important. Also, another thing I should mention before getting this thing installed are these two, um, just two rings here, just around the G1 quarter inch threads. These are actually um, anti-leak circuitry. And you see just this little cable here that sort of breaks off from them. And uh, once you have everything installed, you will be able to monitor all that using software. So that's definitely a pretty cool um, added feature. And also with the two G1 quarter inch threads, um, they don't seem to be labeled as either an inlet or an outlet. And judging by the way this mono block's been designed, um, it shouldn't matter anyways. So let's get this thing installed and uh, see how it performs uh, with the i9-9900K. So there you have it, the Z390 Aorus Extreme Water Force fully kitted out with the monoblock installed. I hope you guys enjoyed that montage footage. It wasn't really hard to get the monoblock on, some simple instructions are included in the manual, however I've also showed you the entire process pretty much in this video, so you can't really go wrong, especially if you've dealt with installing uh, custom water cooling parts before. Like I mentioned, the thermal pads come pre-installed and the screws are very clearly labeled in different pouches, so it's pretty straightforward. We also found it relatively easy to align the monoblock over the CPU socket uh, when installing it just by following the cutout on the IO cover and also this uh, shroud section just below the PCH area. Another thing I should mention if you're worried about the thermal pads breaking down after a couple of installations, uh, Gigabyte actually includes another set in the box. And also something I should clarify is that the anti-leak circuitry actually goes around the entire surface of the monoblock uh, and not just around the G1 quarter inch threads uh, as I mentioned earlier, I just didn't pick up on it before. So it does actually go around uh, pretty much all the O-rings and where uh, water could possibly escape out. So it's definitely a pretty cool feature. So I currently have the board running on my Frankenstein test uh, table, I guess you could call it. I do really need to get a test bench uh, for doing this kind of stuff. However, what I have here, uh, well, it's not pretty, still gets the job done. So here's the full system specs that I ran and the uh, ambient room temperature at the time of testing was 24 degrees Celsius. So what I did was run three sets of tests uh, while monitoring the max CPU temperature and voltage through software and the max VRM temps with a K-type thermal probe stuck in between the thermal pads and the actual VRM. I ran the BMW image render with Blender for about 20 minutes, three sets of Cinebench R15 multi-core runs and also three sets of Fire Strike Ultra. So I ran these with MCE on, MCE off and then a manual 5.1 gigahertz overclock on all cores. You can see all my results here and a good thing to note is that uh, throughout the testing performed the VRM temps never got above 32 degrees Celsius which is definitely not a surprise given the massive monoblock cooling them. Also again as I mentioned in my other video with the Z390 Aorus Extreme having MCE on is not really a benefit as the max voltage pushed for stock clocks was definitely much higher than needed and the 9900K is definitely a chip that runs hot. So you can actually achieve lower temps with lower voltages and higher overclocks by just fiddling around with the settings for a bit uh, yourself uh, and doing it all manually. So for the overclock, I managed to push 5.1 gigahertz on all cores uh, with 1.32 volts set in the BIOS and the low line calibration set to turbo, which actually pushed a maximum of 1.392 volts while I did the blender runs. And while the CPU didn't hit its TJ Maxx at 100 degrees Celsius, 96 degrees was still pushing it pretty close, so it's definitely not ideal. Perhaps with a larger radiator surface or maybe deleting the 9900K and I could have pushed it a bit further as the motherboard is definitely capable. For gaming and using the Firestrike Ultra runs as an example, max temps with the overclocks uh, were 82 degrees Celsius, uh, which I'm pretty happy with. However, I'd probably still try and find a sweet spot for temps, uh, voltages and clock speeds at around 5GHz on all cores and just run that uh, on a 24-7 basis if I was to 
actually run this setup. So there you have it, uh, my coverage on the Z390 Aorus Extreme Motor Force. Definitely a pretty extreme motherboard as its title suggests, uh, which looks and performs awesome as well. However, it has a pretty hefty price tag attached to it of around $1,500 in Australia and $900 in the US. So let me know your thoughts uh, of this motherboard in the comments below. Let me know if it's for you or not. Drop us a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.